We've got a story now that you may remember, especially fans of high school basketball in our area. The discussion of Section 5's greatest teams comes up each year around this time, and there's one that always seems to come up. And Chuck Wade is here with more on really a triumph and a tragedy story. Yeah, there's certainly a couple of stories within this one. And we are in the middle of sectionals right now. In Class B, Charlotte is the top seed. Coming off an appearance in the state Final Four last year, the first in nearly 30 years at the school. And it's those teams led by two stars that is so widely remembered for their talents and the tragic ending to the lives of two of the team's stars. It hangs tucked away in a corner, a silent reminder of Section 5's first team to win back-to-back -back state championships. A story of success rarely seen in our area and an all too tragic ending. I don't think there's a year that goes by where I don't think of those guys and what they were and what they might have been. Leo Roth had just arrived in Rochester to write for the Times Union. He speaks now of Charlotte's dynamic duo, Chris Tuck and Devin Press Murphy. Everybody knew about these kids, uh, whether you were in Buffalo or Syracuse, throughout New York State. So it was, the reputation was there, um, how good they were. They were actually the, the, probably the best team. Uh, you know, it was, it, you had to really have your A game to beat them. And few did. The Tuck and Murphy-led teams at Charlotte rolled through Section 5 for two straight seasons. They did the same at the state championships in Glens Falls. You know, the, the phrase men among boys is, is thrown around a lot to this day. Um, and anyone who looks back at that era remembers those two. I think they could have played the next level. I think they could have played the NBA and had astounding careers in the NBA. They were like pro bound, no doubt about it. They would have went pro. The chance at a third state championship, however, was derailed when both Tuck and Murphy were kicked off the team during their senior seasons for an incident in which neither was ever charged. But that's not the tragedy of this story. On December 6th, yes, Chris was, 1989, Chris was killed in front of our home maybe like 9 or 10 in the evening. That was one of the saddest days of my life where I lost my best friend my brother and I lost, my brother lost a chance to become an NBA player. Three years later, Press Murphy too was gone. And my cousin called me and he said that Press was killed. I was like, like baffled. I said, what happened? And he told me that uh, he got shot. And some choose to remember the tragic ending to these two lives when they think back to those Shalott teams. Yet others remember their talents, those honored on the solitary banner still hanging in the Shalott gym. Got uh, Sheehy's McQuaid teams and Wallace with the, the Grease teams. Um, you know, there's no doubt you would put these, these, that Charlotte team amongst them. What they could have done, just never, we just never got a chance to see that because of what happened to them. Yeah, they were special athletes. Chris Tuck's brother, Ray, who you saw in the story, runs tournaments each year, the money raised goes to scholarships for inner city kids, his way of keeping his brother's memory alive. And on 13wham.com, your thoughts, both the video blog and Section 5's best team. And we have a poll listed with a lot of those best teams, yeah. the McQuaid teams with Tom Sheehy and John Wallace's Grease Athena. It's such an interesting story. And over the past year, I really feel like I've gotten to know these two. Yeah. Even though they've been gone for I remember when years. they were killed. I do too, yeah. And they, they were, were great players. All right, nice, nice piece, Chuck. Yeah. <laughs>
it's nice to win it twice in a row. I feel we played all right. But next week we got to get ready for the states, and that's the big thing: we travel for the states. We didn't come in the game knowing that there weren't going to be a lot of competition. We came in saying that hey, they were just as good as we were. We had to find out. So we found out. And we went after them. You know, it was, that, that was our game plan. get here tonight. How's it feel? I feel good right now. I hope this week go back that far. You want to say championship? Yeah, that's what we're looking forward to. We came in here, we were going to give them all they could handle. And I think we did that. We're hoping they take the states now. Each year, the Rochester pulled the Florida bottle.
press was really the key. Um, the first half we were a little cold and weren't moving that well, but uh, our press picked us up and started moving us around and getting us going a little bit. But I think that was the key. I think the, the fact that uh, he was such a supporter of ours and uh, that he was well known to the students and to our players, it made them go there just a little extra. And uh, I think that it paid off in the playoffs and in the state also. They admired Bill Graff, as did our, our staff members and our community. Everybody admired Mr. Graff, myself included. And I think that they truly did do it in his memory. They went all the way for him because he was there with them. The roller coaster ride that was Chris Tuck's life ended here, in front of his family's home on Seward Street. Police say he was shot to death just before midnight last night. It was almost six years ago that Chris Tuck was celebrating a sectional championship and later a second straight state title with his teammates on the Shalott High basketball team. His talent was a centerpiece for that squad. Tuck and teammate Press Murphy were billed as the dynamic duo. Henry Cooper was Tuck's coach in 1984. And I think that most of the time people look at, at Chris as uh, just an athlete, but he was a good person also. And again, I said the environment that he was in had a lot to do with some of the problems that he had also. In his senior year, Tuck and five other Shalott players were suspended from the team for their role in an alleged crime spree involving shoplifting, purse snatching, and the theft of a car. Tuck once said it was guilt by association. He was never arrested. But the incident may have cost him a shot at playing big time college basketball. I don't think, like I said, that Chris even touched any of his uh, athletic ability uh, as far as becoming the, the best athlete that he could have been. Chris Tuck was voted most athletic by his classmates at Shalott High in 1985. Former coaches say he had the potential to play big time college basketball. His high school team was dominant with him in the lineup and they won the trophies to prove it. This is Shalott High School where Chris Tuck spent his glory years, back to back championship seasons. But they were followed by some trouble, a suspension from the basketball team during his senior year. Chris was never charged, but he was one of five players suspended from the team for an alleged spree of shoplifting during his senior year. One of his former coaches at Shalott will remember much better things about Chris. Everyone in the school really liked Chris uh, a lot, and we just thought he was a super young man, came to school every day and worked hard. Tuck later played at Brockport and MCC. His life ended suddenly last night, shot to death in front of his home on Seward Street. If Chris, you know, had a fault, he was just friends with everyone. He just uh, was happy-go-lucky. Uh, some kids are born with a sense that uh, they can sense good and bad, and they'll kind of shy away. Chris basically uh, treated everyone on face value. Some people close to Chris say he tended to be a follower instead of a leader, and that trait sometimes got him into trouble. But on the basketball court, Chris Tuck was a leader local fans will remember for a long time. Doug Emblidge, News Source 13. According to statements a witness to the shooting made to police, Michael Florence was allegedly the getaway driver. Police say as Christopher Tuck approached his Seward Street home two Tuesdays ago, a car pulled up, two men jumped out, pulled Tuck behind a house, and shot him. Police say they then sped away in the car Florence allegedly was driving. Florence is the youngest son of activist Minister Franklin Florence. Florence is said to be negotiating his son's surrender. Sources say Tuck's shooting was drug related. They say Tuck, a former basketball star at Charlotte High School, was being paid back for some misdeed. Tuck's brothers and sister attended a preliminary hearing for another suspect who surrendered to police last Sunday. 27-year-old Joseph Washington has been charged with murder.
It's becoming an all too familiar scene. Police at the scene of a suspected drug related shooting. The latest victim is 26 year old Devin Murphy, known to many as Press Murphy, number 44, an outstanding basketball star at Charlotte High in the early 80s. Murphy played alongside Chris Tuck, and the two were referred to as the dynamic duo. Ironically, Tuck was killed in a drug related shooting three years ago. Family members refused to talk with us about the incident, but Steve Argro, who lives next door, says he'll miss playing a game of one-on-one -on -one with Murphy. We played basketball together back there in the park. Now it's going to be sad this summer play without him. And I just couldn't believe it. You know, we grew up together here in the projects since we were kids, you know. And um, I just seen him yesterday. We were talking and hanging out for a minute and it struck me as a big surprise. Police are sorting out the pieces of the puzzle. They believe Murphy was in the hallway of the apartment complex when he fired a shot inside the unit, striking 32-year-old Francis Garcia. We're still trying to identify people who were in the apartment at the time of the shooting. Uh, most of them fled. So uh, we are in the process of identifying them and attempting to locate them to interview them. Neighbors say they could hear several rounds of gunfire coming from this apartment on the first floor, leaving behind several bullet holes in the walls. This man, who did not want to appear on camera, says he sees a lot of people coming and going at the apartment. When I come over here and visit my buddy, you can hear the door opening and closing, opening and closing, opening and closing. I mean, there's only, what, five apartments here? Because I've heard, you know, that's that people are waiting for them to come in there, not just them, but friends of Devon's, you know. And I don't want any of them in there to get in any further. They've got enough problems without doing something to that young man, you know. Once they were the worst around, everybody wanted to play them, but not in March. By then, the Lakesiders had their second straight Class A title and their first state championship. And this fall, they remain one of the best of any size, despite losing three starters from the title team. Charlotte's preseason practices may be in darkness, but by March, they hope to return to the light another championship would bring. A big challenge for first-year coach Henry Cooper. If I start to put pressure on them that we got to win the championship again and do this, it, that's going to that's gonna put added pressure on them, and that's what I don't want to do. Henry's got a tough one ahead. Don't let him fool you. After eight years at MCC, he follows former head coach Ron Jones and all that success, with everyone expecting more. But Cooper remains confident. I've enjoyed the... Uh, the uh, the first three weeks and I hope I'll enjoy it a lot more in March. <laughs> but it's the players reaction to him that'll be the key. Jones was all but revered, inspiring great play. But what about Henry? Is the new coach going to make any difference? <laughs> That's hard to say right now. What do you think of him so far? Yeah, all right. Okay, so they're still getting to know each other. At 11, you'll get to know more about Chris and Press Murphy, the two big guns Cooper is counting on to fulfill another season of dreams. For most, taking your second straight sectional title would be enough, but not for Charlotte, not after years of being everybody else's doormat. This was just a step to the Lakesiders' first state title. And even being king of the hill hasn't been enough for these guys. They've had a taste of glory, and they're practicing eight months later for a shot at more. In the um, New York State Pole, they got us fourth. We're supposed to be number one since we won the states and everything. <laughs> How do you feel about that? I feel good. I'm planning on winning another one this year. 
Murphy reflects the overall confidence, almost cockiness of this team, and Press backs it up with the clippings, over 20 points a game. He and teammate Chris Tuck are a two-man team. Tuck only a junior and six foot six. Some may stop one, but not both. Coach wanted me to bring the ball up court this year, you know, help pass inside the press and leave me open on the baseline for the shot. Then practice on my jump shot and get better at it. It's our basketball team, part of it I should say, but I, I think that those are two of the finest athletes in this area. And uh, if we can get those two guys into the game and our situation players, uh, we're going to do okay. Should that game plan hold up, first-year coach Henry Cooper should make almost all forget about Ron Jones, the man he replaced, especially if Chris Tuck is right. I got my bags stacked. We're going back to Glen Falls. We just got to whip team by team. You know, don't get too overconfident. Charlotte's third straight A title was almost anticlimactic. Like I said, almost. Star forwards Chris Tuck and Press Murphy made the Lakesiders near locks from the opening bell, combining for 48 points a game. But instead of celebrating, Chris and Press were looking to the next challenge, back-to-back -back state championships. What's so nice about those two guys, they, they are... Uh... You can take press and move him outside, and he can take an 18, 20 foot jump shot, and you got Chris inside to get the rebound. So it's nice to have a, a guy that can go in and out like that. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's been great for us. It's worked out so far. There are one-two punch known as the dynamic duo. Chris is Batman, the muscle. Press, the high-flying, slamming, jamming Superman, clearing up the courts to make things safe for the Lakesiders. We got a real, real special relationship on the court and off the court. You know, we've been trying to, you know, get things together since we about to, you know, take that trip back to Glen Falls. You know, we were real close, you know, friends that ain't on court. Does that help in your play? Yeah, you know, because if something ain't going wrong, you know, we can talk it over. The bond continues to work Charlotte's way, combining to take the opening round in the States. Three more wins and the year-long dream becomes reality. And the kids are, got real good attitudes going in and that's going to make a big difference. And I think that with our speed and quickness, we should be able to do our thing. 